Recently, I was reading one of the entertainment rags that in 2009, Steven Spielberg was paid $50 million by NBC Universal for theme park royalties based on his movies. It made me wonder if Steve-O, as I like to call him, <laughs> might be interested in creating a ride based on my life. <laughs> Something happened to me that I wasn't really expecting. I'd just come back from visiting my oddball family, which, to be honest, can sometimes put me in a vulnerable place. After dropping my luggage inside the door, I begin to sort through five days of unopened mail. Among the restaurant menus and union magazines that I never read were two unexpected bills. I suppose unexpected is the wrong word, in that I knew they would be arriving at some point. <laughs> but I didn't think they would come on the same day. <laughs> and I didn't realize how frighteningly huge they would be. 2010, although very fulfilling in a number of ways, hadn't exactly been a banner year in the money department. As I stared at these two ginormous invoices, both of which were marked due on receipt, I had absolutely no idea how I was going to pay them. In order to avoid a panic attack, I did what I always do. I applied a nice thick layer of denial over the whole situation. <laughs> oh, it'll all work out, I heard myself say, as I tossed the offending bills on the dining room table. But something about the statement sounded hollow and unconvincing. <laughs> a small cloud began to form over my head. And for the next two days, I couldn't shake it. Then, midweek, as I sat at my desk, innocently eating a chicken salad sandwich, the earth opened up beneath me, and I sank into the abyss. There was no denying it. I had failed, utterly and completely. Just a few hours before, I had been a working artist. Not famous, no genius, but clever enough to make a living and remain vaguely optimistic about my future. <laughs> <laughs> now, suddenly, I was a middle-aged flop. What the hell had happened to me? Instantly, my mind went leapfrogging uncontrollably backward to my earliest days when all I wanted in the world was Timothy Hutton's acting career. <laughs> He had just won an Oscar for Ordinary People, playing the same kind of sensitive, troubled wimp I was born to play. <laughs> and why hadn't I been cast in Mask instead of Eric Stoltz? I was good in that audition, they had said so. Sure then, if I had gotten that part, I'd have lots of money now. Plus, I'd no share. <laughs> I couldn't stop pouring on the salt. Why hadn't I moved to L.A. when I was still young and cute? Or maybe I should never have left New York in the first place. Those people loved me. They got me. <laughs> the slide continued into the following day. Why hadn't I signed with Agency A instead of Agency B? Why had my friend become an A-list writer when he can't write for shit? <laughs> maybe I should have had children. They'd be grown by now and could help support me. <laughs> and why hadn't I won that fucking Emmy for Boston Legal? Yeah. They got a truckload of those things every year. They couldn't spare one. <laughs> then my mother called. <laughs> I made two mistakes. The first was picking up the phone. The second was giving her an honest answer when she asked how I was. You know, David, she said impatiently, I don't know why you don't call that sweet Jennifer Aniston girl who used to live next door to you. You know she's a big star now. And I bet if you ask her, she would give you a part in one of her movies. <laughs> what? 
This was not the first time my mother had suggested I contact one of my famous friends for career help. <laughs> and as I always do, I had to explain that, well, things don't really work that way. <laughs> Which begs the question, why don't they work? <laughs> about this business, it all seems so possible when you're young and flawless and can stay up all night. <laughs> <laughs> then somewhere along the line, usually around your mid-thirties, it begins to dawn on you that maybe, just maybe, your particular package of looks and talent might not be quite enough to catapult you into that upper echelon. <laughs> the one you'd always so cavalierly planned to land in. <laughs> Suddenly, a series of deals are struck. Okay, I'll do this instead of that. I'll trade goal one for goal two. I'm flexible, I can adjust. But then, something happens. Some odd, seemingly unrelated event that for reasons you might not initially understand shakes you to your core. For me, it was the closing of the old actor's home in Woodland Hills. <laughs> I had never been to the place. I'd never even seen a picture of it. But it's good to know. <laughs> but on hearing of its demise, I was swept over with panic. Somewhere in the far reaches of my mind, Woodland Hills had been my backup. <laughs> I told myself I could always go to Woodland Hills, <laughs> where I'll be fed and changed until it's time to take that final bath. <laughs> oh my God. But now, that comforting concept, that little trailer of coming attractions known as my future, looked as flat and blank as if the film had suddenly run out of the projector. What lay ahead for me now? Obscurity? Loneliness? Tender vittles? <laughs> I decided it was time to go to the liquor store. <laughs> not have enough money to pay my fucking bill. I sure as hell had enough to buy a pint of haagen a bag of Cheetos, and a fifth of Jack Daniels. <laughs> as I sat watching a rerun of a talk show that I'd already seen, scrape up some forgiveness. It had been rugged lately. I'm not a born juggler. It doesn't come naturally to me. But over time, I've learned to keep tap dancing, to keep tossing pebbles at the palace window until somebody opens the latch and screams, okay, you can come in for a minute. <laughs> but on this particular evening, at 1.30 in the morning, covered in Cheeto crumbs. <laughs> I felt like I'd run out of tricks. <clears throat> there are worse things than failing, I told myself. I didn't have cancer. I wasn't living in my car. <laughs> yet. <laughs> Many people I knew were struggling. Maybe I could have a garage sale. <laughs> Maybe it was time to go to bed. <laughs> Luckily, before turning in, I decided to check my email, where I discovered my problems were over. Apparently, there was over two million dollars waiting for me in my bank account in Nigeria. In addition to its 
Hume's many other accomplishments <laughs> was the birthplace of irony. <laughs> As I crawled into bed, I told myself that maybe things would look better in the morning. They didn't. That is, until the mail came. And there, in among the flyers for plays I have no intention of seeing, and offers to sink myself further into debt, was one extraordinarily large royalty check for a play I had written almost 20 years ago. I had virtually forgotten the play even existed, <laughs> much less that it was still being performed somewhere out there in the hinterlands. <laughs> but happily, the play had not forgotten me. Suddenly, things weren't so bad. <laughs> That's sad broken wretch who hadn't showered in two days <laughs> was quickly replaced by a still energetic guy who might yet have a few tricks up his sleeve. Oh. I was fine. I was better than fine. I was a show business professional. <laughs> Funny how dreams, no matter how compromised, never really die. Thirty years after having bought my first ticket on this ride, I still like it. Every time the car whips around the track at breakneck speed, forcing my stomach into my throat, I swear I will never get on it again. <laughs> but I always do. I haven't been near a real roller coaster in more than a decade, but I still remember that dizzying sensation as you are hurtling down toward what looks like certain death, only to be jerked up and out of harm's way at the last possible second. I always loved that moment of salvation, but my favorite part was what came next. That long, slow climb back up the tracks as your heart fills with anticipation. Up you go as everything resembling the earth slips from your peripheral vision. You can still hear the music and the crowd, but they are so far below you. All you can see is big blue sky. And it just keeps getting closer and closer and closer.